Hi, welcome. I am Astrid. I am Wattle and Wool, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, for anyone who is coming back, welcome back. For those of you who have just found me, hello, hi. Uh, I hope you enjoy and that you like and subscribe um, because it does help me get out there and be seen by more people. First off, I would like to pay my respects to the Wajak Wajak Noongar people, the people on the land on which I stand, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I have a coffee as always and I have quite a bit to show you today. Um, let's get started. this one before. This is my cozy cabin brioche shawl. Uh, it was with the cozy cabin advent yarns of 2021. These are DK um, 20 gram minis. So I think they're 80 meters each. And it was by Twisted Willow Yarn. Now I absolutely adore this. I did rant and rave about how happy I am with it last time. I don't, the reason it's finished, finished, finished is because I finally woven in the ends. I haven't actually blocked it, but it's a, it's a shawl. I don't really, I don't think it needs blocking. Like I'm kind of happy with it. So this is a, uh, you can see the short edge here and a triangle. Um, it's kind of a symmetrical triangle, but it's a isosceles, which is the ice cream cone one. Um, the one regret I do have is not starting off with a eye cord edging. Um, I didn't know that I was going to do one at the end, so I'm a bit sad that I didn't do one at the beginning, but apart from that, I love it. This took me, when did I start it? I started it pretty, pretty soon. We went to Rotnest January, and I started it in, on Rotnest in January with my family. So this is about four or five months of work, um, just adding to it when I can. I talked before about how the colors, like I tried to put them into a correct order and honestly they're not. They're just, it feels like I plucked them out randomly, but I actually really, I do love the shawl. Um, I actually love the inside just as much. So that makes me really happy that it, for me, is reversible, even though the pattern isn't quite. So obviously this is the outside and then that's the inside. So it's not completely reversible but I think it is beautiful. So I've woven in the ends. I actually went to the ballet with my mum. I took her um, for her birthday. We saw Alice in Wonderland. It was amazing. Like so incredible. Um, and I brought a couple of things along to knit there. So I'll show you one of them. But the other thing I did after I got ready, um, I had some time to kill. So I decided to make a reel about weaving in my ends. So you can find that at Instagram. I am at wattle and dot wool. I'll put it down below. Um, if you ever want to chat, by the way, that's the best place to find me. I'm not always posting, but I'm usually lurking. Creepy little stalker. Um, so yeah, you can always come say hello. My second finished object is, uh, it's, I'm, la, la, la. <laughs> Hi. Maggie. Hello, darling. Oh. Who are you? Can you say who you are? This is Mel. No, who are you, my darling? Marissa. She's my little sister. We have the same hair now. She used to have hair down to her bottom and now mm, I love I love her hair. I just loved it long. Yeah, right. <laughs> we had to have a family meeting before she cut it and she forgot that. So I'm feeling very disappointed and left out. <laughs> love you, baby. Is it hello? Oh. <gasps> Look at those eyes. That was good. That is a good picture. All right. That was the heater. Okay. So, 
let's get back onto this. I'm so glad I asked if you guys wanted bloopers because I feel like today is a lot of them. I'm in a silly mood. So this is the second finished object. This is, um, it's actually more green than it's showing you, but this is a beanie that I finished it is actually for my ex-boyfriend. Um, he is going to New York um, around Christmas and I wanted him to have a beanie that would be comfortable. So I, oh, itchy nose. I was inspired by the Empire State Building. Some of you guys guessed it on Instagram and then I'm useless at figuring out how to reply to those stickers. So I couldn't reply, but you got it. <laughs> um, so this is the Empire State Building there's six of them. What actually happened, so I haven't even finished the ends, like it's just, um, so this is the full skein that came with the 25th day skein that came with these minis, um, for the advent. And I knew I wanted it to be a beanie just because, um, it was gorgeous. It's a DK weight, so it would be a really quick beanie. And just the, crispness of the um the wool I've got where is the rest of it here we go this is the i've got so much left um this is the rest of it and it's just a really crisp i don't know if you can see that without my face is that better i can't, I can't tell i hope so um this is just, it's a really crisp um crisply spun dk weight uh, it's kind of tonal, so you've got these beautiful shades that, like, you can see them running through, just the, the way the shadows play. It is absolutely stunning. And so I knew that I would want it to be, um, yeah, I, I wanted it to be a beanie, and I wanted it to be something with um, technique and definition, because just the yarn would hold up so well for it. So when I thought of the Empire State Building, I knew that I was going to do that, so I cast on, I did my usual tubular cast on because I just think they are the best for a beanie. I did about 10 centimeters, four inches of ribbing about, honestly, I think, I think it's not quite 10. I think I did get a little bit bored and then just move on because I was too excited about the design, but I wanted it to be enough that he could, I'll show you, that he could um, have it rolled up and it'd be quite a tight beanie or that he could even have down I mean it's gonna look stupid at the top but you know like a bit more slouchy but it would cover the ears again so either one or two layers <clears throat> oh my goodness one or two layers um of it and I'm still gonna weave in those ends then after you do the rib I change to everything is a twisted knit so the pearl is normal, but the knit has to be um, twisted, which just allows it to have this relief that stands out a lot stronger. If you can see, I just think it looks so pretty as well. I think it really stands out. Um, <clears throat> the crown decrease, I didn't really know what to do. So I just did my normal, um, except instead of a K2 together, I did a P2 together because this is all purling um, or reverse stocking that. So it's all pearls. But it also means that because my ex is bald, that this beautiful knit texture is going to be on his head. So he will, um, it'll, it'll just feel really good against his skin. So this one is, oh God, it took me like a few days. It took me a bit longer because I originally cast on too many and I kind of went like this and it kept going out and I was like, oh, that's too big. <laughs> so I ripped it all back started it again. Um, and I think that's why I got so bored with the one by one rib because I was just like, I've already been doing this. Like I'm bored. Um, but I'm really happy with it. Um, we are at the moment finishing off everything for our house. Oh my God. It's just been crazy. Like trying to do a break lease, um, with a real estate agency that aren't quite the most professional I've ever met in my life. Um, and yeah, so it's just been here, there and everywhere. Um, yeah, so we're kind of waiting on everything to work out and to happen. Um, so he said to me, he was like, it's all right, you go work. I'll do the stay at home dad stuff. <laughs> I was like, yeah, thank you. Um, 
so this is kind of a beginning to say thank you, but I want to give it to him after all the house is done, just so we can kind of have like a a goodbye. You've meant a lot to me. We lived together for almost a year and a half. Um, you are really important to me. Here is a present instead of a, hey, did you pay the cleaners? Because <laughs> that's less fun of a conversation. And I still really care about him and I want him to be happy. So this beanie is for Alec. Now I've decided to name it Goodbye Hello. Um, partly because I feel like New York, New York, um, it needs like the, there's something, comma, something, you know, New York, comma, New York. Um, and just the title. And it's also, you know, I'm saying goodbye to him. He's saying good hello to New York. It, I don't know. It just all kind of worked for me. So Goodbye Hello is this beanie. It is a super simple i did it in three days including frogging and ripping back um beanie it is so comfortable and it will be coming out very 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 soon if you would like to test knit this for me i've already written up the pattern um please comment below um because this is very spur of the moment um i've got so many other patterns i actually need to write but this one is already done so i may as well get onto this one very quickly in addition if you would like to if you'd like to test knit this one for me so I've got a couple of brioche things coming out that I'm, maybe if you would like to test any brioche, if you can comment down below, I've got this one, which is a shawl. I've got a scarf and I've got a cowl. I'm going to talk about those in a second. Um, but yeah, this way I can, I've already got the other two patterns written up, this one and need to finish writing up. Um, and I'm going to write it in two ways and then you tell me which one is easier because there is two ways to write this and I just don't know which one is going to be best. So yes, that is... That is all the releases. <laughs> um, unintentional, actually. I didn't even mean to come on and release things, but I will. All right, I'm going to blow my nose again. Oh, my Lord. All right. Whips. So this is the bag I took to the ballet with me. This is the Hohi Locatelli um, Boho bag. I keep calling it the dumpster bag, and I don't know why. Maybe it's the hipster bag. No, that's a shawl. I think it's the dumpster bag. It's totally not. Like, that's not at all what it would be called. But it just, I don't know, because I, like, dump stuff in it. <laughs> then I dump it around. Um, it makes sense in my head, but I'm. it's totally not what it should be called. So I'm so sorry, Hoki, if I'm I'm really doing you a disservice. This is getting some progress. This is the, um, I don't have a name for it. It's the Roald Dahl-inspired, um... Rainbows and speckles. I call it the bubble top. Oh, my. I really do need to come up with a name for it. It might even just be something along the lines of gay pride because we're having tea. Uh, it'll be something along the lines of gay pride, I think. Why not? Or like allies or something. Um, so this top is made with um, a few skeins of birthday fun at the Wonkers which is dyed up by Anna of Stitchcraft and Wizardry. And then right up here is the uh, contrast, the little bubbles um, for each of these. Last time I showed you, I have no idea where I was up to, but I definitely didn't have the sleeves done, and I don't think I had the purple done either. So I have finished the sleeves I uh, on both of them. I did the tubular bind off or the Italian bind off. I did something that involved a needle. Um, and because I don't know where, I don't know where my straight needles have gone. Like my big, um, you know, the fat woolen needles, um, like the metal ones, I had them all, I put them all in a little purple container and I was like, I'm going to put them all together because that's a smart way of doing it. And then I put them somewhere and I don't know where they are. So now I'm stuck using like curved mattress needles, um, which is not actually fun. So anyway, I did the... It's a um, two by two rib um, with a sewn Italian bind off, whatever it is, um, which took, oh my Lord, so long. Um, but I'm really, really, really happy. This is, I don't think I'm going to add any shaping to it. I just want it to be really basic. This is all the fun. And then I want it to be like top, just continued. So I am doing helical knitting. Um, I took this to the ballet and I did... Where's the purple? The pe All the little bubbles in the purple are, like, shunk to the back. Um, but I basically did this whole stretch in here. 
um, which is way more impressive than it looks because my I had two balls of yarn because it's helical and they decided that they loved each other and wanted to get very, very entwined. And it took me a lot of energy to unentwine them. Um, so I finally figured it out, got it, and I'm up to here. This is just, it's like the fullest part of my bust that it's up to, so I can't really show you anyone. Um, and it's also because of the bubbles, they kind of poke out a little bit, so it makes the fabric floppy. Um, and like floopy, like it kind of, and I think the cable as well, it like sticks out. So it just looks a bit funny, but I'm waiting until I can get a little bit more depth on this. Um, and then it should, um, drag down the proper way and it'll look so good. So I'm really, really, really happy with this. Um, one thing we are doing, so for those of you who don't know, I'm a school teacher. Um, I love my kids, love my classes. Oh my God, they're insane, but I love them. And one thing we've started doing, me and a couple of friends, is we're doing a safe spaces um, place for kids. So um, teachers basically get together. We do um, once a Friday um, and we just sit and we chat. And if kids have got questions or if they've got something to talk about um, or whatever, it's kind of, it's like a safe space for people. So it is... It was originally designed with LGBTQI plus students in mind, of which my school does actually have quite a few. Um, and some of the teachers who are either um, in the alphabet army or allies to them, um, we're all kind of getting involved. And so that's been really fun. Um, and then if students um, want to talk about other things as well, so we address racism, we address bullying. We It's not like a it's not a um structured kind of thing it just kind of is um but I think that's better and I think it's more gentle on the students and it's been really fun so far <clears throat> so I would like to get that finished so I can wear that to safe spaces just because that'd be cool um what else is in my oh okay this one right now this is actually in timeout because I'm gonna have to frog it and I don't want to because I'm angry at it. This is the other British one that I was talking about. I was saying about it last time that I podcasted um, that I was in a conundrum because I needed to do, I needed to do the arches to see if it was the right stitch count. But I, if it is the right stitch count, I don't want to do the arches too low <clears throat> because I want it to be a big M, not a little M. But if it's not the right stitch count, I know that I'm going to have to rip it back anyway. And that makes me angry. Um, so yeah, wrong stitch count. So <laughs> um, this is the three yarns that I made um, bouquet for Beth in. And which I just wanted to give her. I don't know how to do that at the moment. She's just really busy with exams and stuff at work. Um, and then the uh, navy is this beautiful, um, I think it's called Nashville. Um, by Anna of Stitchcraft and Wizardry. Again, these were a custom fade set for by Anna as well. Um, and so I made I made a giant brioche scarf, which I have previously given to Beth, um, using this pattern. And then I decided that I wanted to make um, the same idea. So you can already see one is coming through here, one little archway. Um, I wanted to do it in a cow. And I thought having the three colours would just be beautiful. And so... I cast on. Now, I need to add on 16 more stitches and or take off eight, but I don't really want to take off eight. I'd rather add a little bit more. Um, wait, is it eight? No. 40, take 16. 34, not eight. 34. There must be a footy much going on. I can hear the siren. Anyway. Um... So I've got to, this is an eye cord cast on. What I'm thinking is I'm literally just going to rip it back to that, thread the needles through, and then just add on. I've actually had to hold the, where are we? Hold the cast on edge in here so that I can graft it together at the end um, because I decided not to do it before in case I needed to rip back, which I'm glad I didn't because that would be more annoying. So I'm just going to rip back to that and then add on. So it really shouldn't be that hard. Um, the weird thing about this, though, is... Um, oh, do I have, I've got it over there. Um, it's a Lush spray. So anyone who knows me knows I love Lush, um, the body shop. And there is a spray called Twilight or Sleepy. They kind of, it's the same thing. They've changed names and it's a lavender scented sleep spray. 
I also have the body wash. I have the body jelly. Um, I've got like a whole lot of stuff. And this, these colors remind me of the sleepy spray. And I think I must have sprayed the sleepy spray and then knit on this as I kind of wound down and calmed down because now I've psycho induced myself that every time I do like a row on this, I'm like bedtime. And I just, it means this is impossible to do because I'm, I've convinced myself that I need to sleep every time I start touching this, <laughs> which is very inconvenient as I'm sure you can understand. Anyway, this is the cowl. Now that I know the original numbers, um, the pattern can be written up. Um, the only thing is I need, to, I do need to film a tutorial for the, um, British four stitch decrease. Um, because I figure I've got a YouTube channel. I may as well have my own tutorials too. Um, and if I'm selling my own patterns, I feel bad linking to other people's tutorials unless they do it much better than me. Like Stephen West, I'm definitely going to link to his stuff. Um, but I, th I figure I may as well as well. So these are the, um, oh, this will be a cowl. It will be quite deep. I want to do, um, so I've got, these are uh, English. These are 20 rows and then I'm going to do 20 rows of the arch and the whole thing's going to be repeated three times. So quite a deep, long neck cowl, but I love the squish factor of brioche and I just think it's going to be beautiful. Um, Yes, so this is going to be Meet Me in Italy Cal. Um, again, if you would like to test knit this, it'll be, to be honest, it'll be like an accompanying knit, um, not really a test knit. Um, but let me know. I've got this one as a scarf, or now I've got the updated cow version. Okay, so this is still in timeout because I've got to rip it back, and I just don't want to. I might do a reel of ripping it back. I feel like I need to do more reels. Instagram is really big on reels at the moment, and I'm noticing that. I'm just not getting as much engagement. Not that I'm all about like, vanity metrics and like, how many people are following me? Don't actually really care. Um, but I love the community and you can't really have a community if you don't engage. And so I do care about being visible and being seen because I want to be part of the community. Um, I hope that makes sense. So yeah. Um, reels. I know I'm not very good at them, but I like them. They're fun. All right, next working project. Um, what's in this bag? Oh, I've got to talk to you about that. Okay, I've got so many things to talk to you about. Let's go with... I think I'll talk to you about small things and then big things I'm really excited about. Let's do that. So... Super small, have barely made any progress on it, but this is a beanie. This is going to be called the Juniper Beanie. It is, oh, so delightful. Um, it is merino silk and merino, both dyed up in the colorway Juniper. So I'm calling it Juniper Beanie because it is so beautiful. I was knitting on it as I got my coffee this morning um, using my thread and maple clutch bag that I got from Louie and Lola and I, so many people were just so impressed and they're like, oh my God, I could never do that. I'm like, mm, you can, do you want to try? Like, oh my, no, I would mess up your work. And I'm like, mm, I'd be pretty bad if I couldn't fix the simple mistake that a beginner's going to make. So come and try it. Sadly, no one took me up on it, but I'm always willing for someone to come work on my stuff. I mean, brioche is probably the most intimidating looking. Um, but again, it's one color, one row at a time. Super easy. The next thing, I, so I have this whole, baha <laughs> I have a whole pile of, um, knit crate yarns that I do love. And I was looking at them the other day and I got inspired. So this is the Bloom by Ordine Wools. I think that's what it is. And it is like a thick worsted. It's a chain at ply. They're all attached to each other at the moment, so I can't even properly pull them out. Um, but it's like, a, yeah, chain at ply. Um, it's alpaca and camel, I think. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I've been thinking I want to do some kind of really big wrap. Um, I have them in this neutral grey beige. 
And then this, oh wow, that is really bright on screen. It is definitely not that bright. Um, it's more of a wine, not wine red. Um, I don't even know what the right color is. It's not wine. It's darker. It's lighter than wine, but like maroney. Oh, that's the wrong color. I don't, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to English it and think, do we have the color description in the bands? It's still so pink on screen. It's called Nasturtium, which isn't a very good colorway name because Nasturtiums are lots of different colors. But it is 80% alpaca, 10% silk, 10% camel. It, oh, it's a DK weight. Did not expect that. But it's beautiful. It's so fluffy and light and just gorgeous. And I really want... Oh, that was an awkward sound. I really want to do it in a beautiful um, shawl. So I was thinking, what am I going to do? Do I want to do like the um, half and half triangle wrap by Pearl Soho? Um, and I was like, no, I want it to be my own. I love the idea of, um, not necessarily intarsia, but like intarsia, um, like modular knitting. I'm getting really interested in it at the moment and you'll see that in a minute. Um, and so I was thinking, well, what if I did some sort of, um, shawl, like half of it be the reddish pinky color and the other half be the beige. And then I was thinking, well, what if I did, um, like a... What if I did like a um, design on it or something? And then I was like, well, I don't want to do color work. I don't want to have to carry across because I know that this is going to be knit flat um, and I don't want to do all the extra bits. So then I was thinking, well, what flower does really well and like is really beautiful and really stand out but that I haven't really seen in a lot of knitting before? And then I was thinking peonies. Um, peonies? No, not peonies. Why am I thinking peonies? I'm thinking... Proteas. That's the one. The South African National Flower. So Proteas are beautiful and I absolutely love them. So then I was thinking, well, how would I design something that would show off the, um, the flowers and the intricacy of the plant and make it look really beautiful? And then I was like, well, why don't I do literally weaving onto the scarf? Now, this will make it a lot more delicate. It will make it a lot more, um, I'll have to be really careful of it. Um, but this is the swatch. So there are too many thingies. I think instead of, I think I'll do one, maybe two in this one and then three instead of this middle one and this middle one that is just adding too much. I did it at first and I didn't like it. And I was like, what don't I like about it? And it looked really messy. It looked like a sea anemone that was just like screaming for its life. And then I was like, oh, why don't I make this at the bottom? I'll do a little weave in there and just tighten it up. So that's what I'm thinking I would do, except I'm going to do a mirror image. So this is going to be the beige side with the... Um, Protea on top and then the other side is going to be the um nasturtium side with the Protea on top so it'll be like a two-sided color work or like a yeah like a mirror image color work shawl um, I have no idea when this is going to happen either because <clears throat> no idea but this is now living in my brain and I'm very excited about it I also love the um the weight of this I started it a little bit with needles that were a little bit too big and then I just jumped up to a smaller gauge needle at the top and I really enjoy um the effect so and it's just so breezy and light and floppy look at that isn't that perfect for a shawl like it's just it's so good so this is going to be one day something but who knows when I'll just keep it in my pile of stash ideas the next thing I was meant to start excuse me um I was meant to start like okay, I was meant to start a few things I had the um I'm a test knitter I got accepted into Phoebe of Friday Knits into her test knitter for her bomber.com jacket and I ordered the yarn from Woolen Works and so literally she came home and then she like dyed it up for me and oh my god you have no idea how good it is I just paid it and so excited to show you. Um, 
And yeah, so I got everything sent over to me and it just hasn't quite come. I think Australia Post is still being a bit of a pest. Um, and so in the meantime, I was like, you know what, let's either finish something or start something or something, something, something. Um, because I just want to knit and I need to knit. So I, was talking about knitting the this cardigan basically or this jacket out of the 2021 knit or die oz advent so she did it based on australian animals which i thought this is going to be an australian designer so jane um jane slicer smith is an australian designer it's an australian book um and it, she's literally inspired by Australia in this and um, Australian advent by an Australian dyer. I just, it all makes sense. It's all Australia. It's a whole thing. So I started um, looking at this and I decided I would, I should probably start, where are you? I should probably start actually making something um, to practice it because I don't know how to, I've never done mitres before, mitered squares. Go. Nope, that's the vest. Where's the jacket? Coat, here we go. I've never done mitres before. I don't want to show too much because this is a paid for book. But I've never done them before. And so I was like, well, I've never done them. What do I do? And everyone's like, oh, they're so easy. And I was like, oh, they don't look it. So I made this one here, which is the cutest little square ever. This is out of day... God, I think it's 20. No, I think I rearranged them. I think I did. I think I rearranged them into a colorway that I would like. It's like rainbowish. The brights are going to be at the top and it's going to kind of fade down to more neutrals at the bottom. Um, but yeah, so I did this one basically to see if I could do it. It's, it is really easy. Everyone was correct. Um, I was skeptical and I'm wrong. It is very easy to do and I'm very excited. Now, the problem is the instructions are, you start with the swing skirt, then you go to the bodice, and then you do the sleeves and blah, blah, blah. My issue is I wanted to do the, I if it's in here as well. No, it's mostly here. Um, so I wanted to do the brights at the top, not halfway through. I don't want them to be sitting um, as like the skirt bit, because that means that the plainer ones are gonna be at the front, uh, at the top and I don't want that I wanted it to be like a fade down almost um, I know it's not gonna be exactly like that but that's the kind of idea so then I was looking at it and I was like well okay I thought this is gonna be really hard it's actually kind of easy and it, I don't like following patterns in the, on a good day because I don't think many designers actually like following patterns exactly as it is I, I don't mind it for a test knit but for my own thing I don't really like it so I'm thinking I'm going to start the bodice at the top I'm basically just going to follow the triangles and copy what it says to do and start top down instead of middle, top, bottom. So we'll see how this goes. This could be a travesty of epic proportions or it could be amazing. Um, this will be very slow knitting. It is modular. It is literally picking up and um, closing off stitches. So I love it. I love this garter. It like, it just, it pops so cool so amazing i'm so in love with it and i can't wait to make it um but i just don't know how it's gonna go so we shall find out but this is one of my goals i did a um accomplish along for 2022 by the way if you're still doing it um post online i haven't seen many posts but you're welcome to do pretty much anything um and there's so many options that you can do so one of them is like knit a miniature thing so i want to do one of the gnomes from from imagine landscapes Wear the yarn, haven't cast on, probably need to do that. Um, another one is knit something with advents. So I've literally done one, I'm starting two, and I'll show you my third in a minute because it's so exciting. Um, so there's so many things you can do, and I really encourage you to jump on and do it. I'll repost it up to Instagram as well so you can see it because um, it does sometimes get a little bit lost. Um, but yeah, so this is just passing along my ways of doing things in my own way. The next one is, I'm so excited for this. Now, this one, all of a sudden, I went in a roll. All of a sudden, I was like, Nyeh! let's do this. Let's sit in and just take the time and focus. So I'm actually going to 
make sure my straps are in place. I'm going to take this one off. It's actually quite cool today. It's like beautiful and bright, but cool. Chile. This is my Ailen cardigan. This is the 2020 advent from... She was three corgis. Um, no. Yes. Once upon a corgi. She was once upon a corgi. Now she is plies and hellhounds. And this is the almost finished, almost finished. Well, yeah. Cardigan. Yay. So I left a little stitch marker on. My sister is home from Broome. That was the one who just walked in. Um, she lives up there and she came home to sort out one of her passports because we're all dual citizens. Um, and so, and it's her birthday in two days. Uh, today is the 29th of May. And so we sat down and we did some um, movie time. We watched big, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. So good. Such a classic. So I just stuck a stitch marker on and wanted to keep track of where I was up to because I've been plugging along this little bit. I've been doing like at school, so at work, if I have time. Because um, at the moment, everything is assignments. So my students have been finishing off their assignments and then I'll get them to mark. So I've been in like a marking drought, but then I'm going to be in a marking flood. So I know that I'm going to get inundated with marking, but until then I was kind of bored, which is an annoying place to be because you know you need a plan, you know you need to prepare, but you can't because you're waiting for the kids to come back with their stuff and then you see where the gaps are and you can't plan without knowing where the gaps are. It's a whole thing. So I was knitting. Basically, it calmed me down because this is a stress spiral. I finished, oh man, I just kept on knitting. I was so excited with this. I finished it and I put the I-cord border. This is going to be the shawl collar. So I just picked up the three stitches from the I-cord because there's an I-cord border all along the bottom. I just picked those up and then basically curved it around. So it's this beautiful curvy hem, which I love. I like that it's not like a straight-ish Ish edge. It's like, you know, it's nice. And this, ah, I'm, as I was doing the eye cord, I don't like eye cord, weirdly, because I seem to do it a lot, but I don't actually love eye cord, but something about this, I couldn't stop. So excited. So I will put it on. Okay, this is the outside. I have also started the sleeve. Um, this is interesting, this sleeve, because I'm pretty sure this is fingering weight. I'm pretty sure this is fingering, but it's on five millimeter needles. So it's like massive needles for what I'm used to, but there's, and there's only 50 stitches, but somehow it's working and it's confusing my little brain. I added short rows just so that there'd be a little bit of a shoulder shaping in here. Um, although this is basically the shoulder anyway. So I'll show you when I have it i to kind of pull it up to adjust it. Now, this is the hard bit about this. Got like strings hanging everywhere. So when it's, when it's on without the um, sleeve, this shoulder cap is very full at the front. So you can see this kind of falls at the front, but what it needs to be is more upright. So this pink is actually over the shoulder, like that, which means this blue needs to be more upright. I'm gonna stand up and show you. Um, I'm so in love with this. If you don't like it, please don't tell me because I'm obsessed. Um, so this is, this is the front side. Um, I'm going to get some fray stop and just because I've done the weave and Steven ends. This is a provisional cast on edge because I'm going to do the same um, I cord bind off here. So this is the, um, the right side. Now this can be worn. I don't really know yet because I'm going to do that shawl collar um, and I'm literally going to do it up to here. So it'll be that cast, that I cord edge, but it'll be like shawl build up and a big, big one around my neck. Um, and that will be in this. So just continuing this one. Um, and the sleeves are going to stay in that gray because I thought that would go with everything and be really nice. It actually has these beautiful pops of, um, red and blue in it. 
So it's just, it's so nice. Now, this is the front. I'm thinking you could either have it um, like that. I'm not going to put any buttons in, but I might do like a shawl pin closure. So it could be loose. It could even be all the way up to like that. So like really tight over, although I don't like how that pulls. So I'll have to figure something out. Um, but the back, look at the peplum. Look at that. I have never been more proud of myself for knitting accomplishments in my life. I am so happy with this. So uh, let me try and escape all the bits of yarn. So all I need to do now is just zoom down the sleeves, which I'm on Sleeve Island, so it's not zooming, it's like plodding. Um, I shall knit as I tell you. I need to get down the sleeves. Oh, actually, I won't even knit because I'm just so excited by it. Can you see? Can you see? I'm hoping it's going to show above my face, but can you see those colours? Those beautiful little specks and pops and it's it's not just grey. It's not boring. It is full of everything. So this um, cardigan, I'm then going to pick up the stitches on the back because the shoulders sleeve caps need to be up here instead of here, I'm going to have to cinch it in at the back. So I'm actually thinking of picking them up and doing a, like a three by three rib maybe for the shawl edge um, or a four by four, something that's going to really hold it in. Um, and because it's going to, I'm hoping that there's going to be a lot of short rows. I'm hoping because there's going to be so much of it, it's going to almost, um, like be voluptuous so it'll go over the back be around my neck so it'll almost hide any puckering um because i've knit this twice now um and i don't really want to do it again i'm not going to write this up as a proper pattern because i don't know how to grade this for everyone else's size instead i'm going to do a suggested recipe so because i was thinking about this and i was like well i would love i would love if someone wrote something like this for me um, and that's why I designed because sometimes I can't find the things. Um, and so I'd love, I would love to make this, which is why I'm making it. Um, but I can understand why it would be so hard. So I'm thinking if I can do like a spreadsheet style where you plug in your own, you have to figure out your gauge, you have to figure out your own measurements, and then you essentially can make a recipe for, um, this cardigan. And I think that would be really, really, really exciting. So, um... Yeah, it won't be a real pattern, but it will be a recipe for one. Um, and I'm thinking, I was thinking about what to call it. So Aelin from Throne of Glass, um, the series, which I'm obsessed with, um, she, she's she got this mantra the whole time. And she says, um, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. And the colorway for this gray is I will not be afraid. And I was thinking about it and I was like, that's probably the perfect name because this whole thing is about short rows and people are terrified of short rows, but the whole thing is also like garter stitch. So it's the least intimidating, but also very intimidating. So I'm thinking I will name it. I will not be afraid of short rows. And this will be, um, yeah, the recipe for, I will not be afraid of short rows. So I'll keep you updated on this. I am so in love with it. Um, it's been really hard to keep knitting on it because all I want to do is stop and admire. But um, yesterday, I didn't do very much. I literally sat and read. I'll talk to you about the books in a minute as well. Sat and read and knit, and that's how much I got done, and I'm so proud. The last cast on that I've just done. So this is knowing that I've got a test knit coming, um, and I've also got, like, seven pa pairs of socks that I sent to Maddie of Mad About You to be wound into sock tubes. So I've got a lot of cutting and heels, toes, and cuffs to come, but I just decided to cast something else on, because why not? I was watching, oh, now, I don't remember who I was watching, and this is a problem. I think it was Knitting Traditions. I have been watching, you know what? Let me just tell you who I've been watching and why I love their channels, because I feel like I love it when other people do this and they recommend what they've been watching, and I would love to be able to do that. So... Here's my subscriptions list of everyone I have been watching. 
So I love TL Yarn Crafts. She does crochet, um, she does her own patterns, and she does yarn reviews. So she's really honest, and I love that. I love that she, even if it's a paid promotion, she's still like, nah, don't love it. Or really love this, this is why. She explains everything. Um, Kuta Vakika, uh, she is Finnish, and she sometimes does blogs or like vlogs. Um, she's making a book at the moment. And she's just really high energy and really fun. And she's Finnish, and so it's really cute. Um, Young Folk Knits podcast. Um, she is from Arkansas, and you can tell her accent is so much fun. I wonder if that's what I sound like to an American. Like, she sounds like this quintessential, stereotypical Southern American to me. Um, and so I wonder if I sound like this stereotypical, quintessential Bogan Aussie. <laughs> I probably am. <laughs> but yeah, so I just, I enjoy listening to her, um, her voice and just the, the way that she does things. Um, she's the one who's inspired me to do a bit more cutaways because I just think the way she does it is beautiful. So let's see if it works. I'm a little bit more high energy than she is, but we'll see. Um, I've just found Hannah Jean Knits. Um, she is new. She does um, knitwear design for her baby um, and for small children. But her, she talked about how her sizes are very inclusive. So she basically does them from newborn up to like 10 years old, which amazing. Um, I have decided to get clucky, which is annoying. So watching someone else make baby wear makes me, it kind of like alleviates some of my cluckiness because I'm like, oh, good. Like they can do it. <laughs> Um, Finnish knitting stories as well. She's really interesting. Um, I think she works in a yarn store and she does a lot of really interesting, um, like patterns. One of her color work jumpers, if you jump on and have a look, it is amazing. And she goes, Oh, I only worked a little bit on this. And it's like, bam, so much of it is done. I'm like, Holy crap. That is incredible. Wow. Um, we Share Needles podcast. I have found them. They, I, I've only watched one episode of theirs. I think they're friends. Um, and they are just so high energy and I love it. I love high energy podcast because that's what I am. So I love watching how exciting they are. Mad About You, obviously. Love Maddie. Uh, Friday Knits, obviously I'm test knitting for her. So she's even like, which is great. Um, I'll Knit If I Want To by Andrea Mowry. Um, she... Everyone knows who Andrea Mowry is in the knitting world. Also, um, Hohi Locatelli, Hohi Knits, uh, her journal. She's released a new episode, which is super exciting. Um, but I just love the honesty and I love how much she shares about um, her knitting process. And she's just very, very much of the idea of like the pie is bigger than you think. There is more pie to eat. Be part of the pie instead of get off it to my slice. And I love that. I love the generosity that comes out. Cozy up knits. Yes, it was. Knitting Traditions. That's what I'm looking at. Um, who else do I follow? High Fiber Knits. I've just found her. She seems fun. I've only watched one episode of hers, but she seems really um, interesting. Um, Cornelia and Rebels is a fellow Aussie. Um, uh, Platypus Knitting by Bubblog. Another Aussie. She's actually a friend of my friend, which is really cool. So yeah, lots and lots and lots of people in my uh, subscriber list, subscription style. I'm doing a lot of, um, chilling and watching YouTube at the moment while knitting, which has been so delightful. Anyway, Knitting Traditions talked about how she was going to make a, like a cow dicky style thing. So, um, it's a cow and it's got a, like a piece at the front that probably comes to about here and then a longer piece at the back that covers a little bit more. In Australia, that seems like the craziest thing to me. But I also appreciate that we don't have um, extreme winters with ice and snow and we don't need to have 45 different layers on or like a really good puff jacket. In Australia, like, it's fine, <laughs> usually. So I completely understand that in Norway she would need it. Um, but she, kept, she showed the picture and I was thinking, I want to make something like that. I have something in my stash, like a magazine, and... I want to make it, but I don't know what, with what, how, blah, blah, blah. So I went shopping in my stash. I've got all my, just, you can't even see it, but just down below, I've got like a whole pile of um, magazines, leaflets. I used to go up shopping all the time and I used to basically just take anything I found to do with knitting from an up shop. 
Um, so I've got a lot of really awesome vintage patterns. I've since been a lot more judicious with would I use it? Do I like it? Is it a technique I like? Is it a um, pattern that I like? Blah, blah, blah. But for a long time, I would just take them all. And this is one that I found and I just loved. I thought this was so cool. You knit it once and you can wear it 12 different ways. So there's a few different ways on here that I'm like, how would you even do that? But there's some others that I'm like, that is so cool. So I was trying to figure out what to make this in. Just to my left hand side, I have a whole pile as in three or four bags of yarn that I'm going to de-stash and that I am either going to give to some friends if they want it. Like I'm probably just going to put it in the group chat and be like, who wants? Um, or probably sell on like Ravelry de-stash. I don't need them gone. It's not like I'm desperate to get rid of them, but I just don't foresee myself knitting with them in the near future. And so I'm happy to pass them along. Um, so I kind of went through that, that pile and I was like, I wonder if there's anything in here. Cause I know there's nothing in my stash that I would use to make these, but is there something in my, I can hang on to if I want, I can get rid of if I want pile. And there was. So this is Quince and Co. Um, Chickadee. It is 100% American wool. This one is Frost 103, the colorway, in lot one, um, 016. It's a sport weight. And it's really, like, nice, but it's woolly. Like, you can, it, it's got, it's a, again, it's crisp yarn. It's got that kind of toothy feeling. It does like to grab onto itself. Um, so I don't think it's super wash. It's non super wash, um, which is amazing. So I really, really, really like it. I have three full skeins and then the fourth that I've just started with, which is leaning down just here. So I've got about four skeins. Now this pattern says that it takes, um, it's like the Zhivago, so like the patterns, um, acrylic yarn. It says it takes for my size, um, for the short, large, I want the short back, but the large pattern, it takes 17 balls and that's of 50 gram, um, 50 grams. So I don't know. I'm totally playing yarn chicken thousand percent playing yarn chicken. Apparently this is 50 grams. So I've got four and <laughs> not 17. We shall see. Um, I know I'm playing yarn chicken. I've also got, so from the looks of it, you make the back front front, so like back left and right front. The sleeves is basically just, yeah, apparently you sew them on and I'm like, really? I would rather like pick them up and add them on. So again, I'm going to see if I can redistribute myself. And then you do the collar. Um, and so it says repeat last row, which is like cave, um, a four by four rib until work fits along front edge across back neck and along other front edge, plus an extra 70 centimeters for tires if desired. So it's a massive collar. And I know I won't have enough of the um, yarn to do it, but I have this one. So this is um, Quince and Co Chickadee again. Um, and this is number nine, lot 008. And it is 362 yards or 331 meters over a hundred grams. So this is a hundred grams. And then these ones are, um, one, eight, one yards or 166 meters for 50. So I feel like meterage, I've probably got more than enough. Actually, let's check that. How much meterage, this is the stuff you should do before you start talking about it. Hey, Zhivago patterns, wool, I want the meterage, 85, oh, 85 meters per 50 grams. This is like three times as, no, two and a half times as much. 17 divided by two is eight and a half. And I've got four. Ah. I'm sure it'll work out. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this is um, my newest little project. So I have 
I cast on, it said I needed to use six millimeter um, needles. And so that's 10 US 10s. And this, I couldn't find my US 10s, but these are 10.5s. And I didn't like how airy this fabric was. Like, I'm sure it'd be beautiful, but it just felt too... <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, It just felt too airy and drapey and it wouldn't have been right. So I also didn't do a massive gauge because as soon as I realized I didn't like the fabric and I knew I would want to go down, I just went down. So I'm now knitting on nine um, US 9s, which is... 5.5 millimeter needles so not quite the sixes that they asked for but this is the cast on for the back i'm pretty sure it's the bottom um and it's just six rows of rib one by one rib and then we're going to start the actual pattern um and i like it i cast this on last night i always i always get um uh inspired by people when they're like oh so i had the idea last night and then i cast it on and it's like this half finished object and you're like that's not a just cast it on like i'm sorry lady on the internet, whoever you are, you must be magical or have the elves helping you because that is not like a, I just cast it on. That is a, I've done this for three weeks and haven't shown you. This is a true, I've just cast it on. Um, <laughs> slight rant, but seriously, I'm sure you understand where I'm at with this. Um, I really love this color. Um, I'm thinking, I'll talk about, I'll, nah, I'm going to talk about it now. Um, so, as I keep saying, I'm going away. Um, and I'm thinking about what to bring. And I'm I'm think I'm trying to look at the gaps in my wardrobe and the gaps in my um I would love to take more me made items as well. And so the gaps in my products, the gaps in my um stuff, and look at what I can bring. I'm also really wanting to only shop ethical um and from amazing brands that I trust. Um I would love them to be um Australian owned or women owned um brands and have size inclusivity so many of them they're like oh yeah we do from extra small to large and our large is a size 12 um not me i am firmly in the middle of like mid to plus size um and i have shoulders and i got chest and i've got hips and i got all that so i need to be able to fit in something and be comfortable in and if i can't be comfortable in it i don't want to buy from it because obviously um and so i don't want to put my money towards some place that's going to support um not having enough size inclusivity so i'm looking at my wardrobe going what are things i could have this the whole where it knit at once where it 12 different ways thing makes me really happy i think that would be amazing for me um and it means it's really versatile which is something that i'm really looking for at the moment um, and it's also a really neutral color, so I can wear it with pretty much anything and it would just be a really happy throw over. It doesn't really matter what it's with. Um, so yeah, so I'm starting to go through my wardrobe and starting to go through like my hand knits as well and just look at what am I wearing? What aren't I wearing? What do I need more of? What do I need less of? So that's been really fun. Um, I'm also starting up like a blog for that. I'm going to start blogging, um, Perth local and then a bit more. Um, so I will let you know when that's actually up and running as well. So this is my, it's going to be a slow whip. Um, I've got a couple of whips, a um, couple of cast ons that I didn't think I had that many, but I really do. That's probably a, not a bad thing, but a worrying thing. Cause I know I've got this test knit coming that I just want to devote all my time for. Cause wait until you see it. It's going to be stunning. The colors and the contrast color and the pattern. It's just, mm, yes. So these are all my works in progress um, slash finished objects. I would like to talk to you about a few other things. So if you're only here for the knitting, thank you so much. Um, and I hope you enjoyed. And if you are here for um, just other things, then stick around and I'll tell you about my life um, in a minute. So I need to blow my nose again. So very recently... I went to, as in two days ago, <laughs> I went to a craft market. So one thing um, I really want to start doing in Australia is looking at more craft markets um, and really exploring them, seeing what's around, um, probably spending money. Um, but I just, I really love supporting local businesses and small businesses and people in craft. Like it's so important to me. And so I found out that the city of Belmont, which is a local council, um, was doing a embrace art market. 
This was in partnership with Valued Lives, which is a disability support program. And oh my goodness, it was amazing. So I went there with my friend Lauren, um, a good friend from work. Oh, sorry, I just knocked that. Um, and we were walking around and we saw a few things and we were just like, this is the cutest place. There was some really inspiring stories. There were some people who were born um, with difficulties like cerebral palsy um, or autism. And it meant that they struggled to engage in society um, because neurotypical people are um, clicky, I guess is the best way to put it. And so they um, found art as a really good escape and way to do it. Other people were um, going to be... Um, other people were maybe born neurotypical and then they had a accident. So one person became a quadriplegic, um, but was still an artist. And it was just beautiful, the things that they made. So I first, um, I found this card, well, not first, but I found this card and it says, "Your laun the laundry is about to get super cute. So a girl at work, her sister has just given birth to a baby and a little boy, um, and oh my goodness, she showed us a picture and his head is perfect. Like his head is a perfect head shape. And I was like, damn, like that's impressive. Cause most babies come out looking a bit squashed, like weird potatoes that kind of left in the, you know, thing too long. But this baby was like, yes, perfect. So I saw it and it was like, I just need to get this. And then I was thinking, oh my God, what if I get it? And then Erin, the girl, doesn't want it to give to her sister, and that would be really weird. And so I was kind of like, oh, my God, I want it. Wait, no, hang on. And I was thinking about it, and I forgot because my brain doesn't – my brain jumps all over the shop, and I forget that some people, especially on the autism spectrum, their brain is a lot more one, two, three, four. It's a lot more um, step by step. And so they'd already gotten up to pay when I was like, oh, wait, maybe I should ask Erin and see if she wants it. And then they were like, oh, do you not want it? And then just because this, the poor girl was so blunt, she goes, does that mean you don't like it? And I was like, no, I love it. I really want it. I just don't know if it's the wrong thing. But then I got in my head again and I was like, well, you know what? Even if Erin doesn't want it, I know, so, I know so many people having babies. I may as well just get this because it's adorable. Turns out Erin does want it. So this is a new card that I got um, and it's, beautiful. So this is from the Embrace Art Market and I love it. The second thing I got were some earrings. So I went past a stall um, from J.I. Artwork. Um, this is her card. It is embossed. I'm trying to show you. Look at that. It's so cool. It's embossed. Like it's amazing. And she made these beautiful earrings. So I'm going to actually take them out and show you. I haven't even taken them out yet. And that's how special they are. As soon as I saw them, I knew I had to have them. As soon as I saw them, I knew I had to have them. They are Banksia flowers and they are bright and happy and I'm wearing them to work on Monday and they are just make me so happy. I love things like this. Um, it's basically the print on the back and then resin coated at the front and they're just stunning. They're so beautiful. So I have her card. I will tag her. She's got her Instagram, so I'll tag her down below with Instagram um, and make sure that you can see and also access because, and she's the sweetest woman, absolutely kindest person. So it'd be so good for people to support her. If you know more people who would like earrings and other incredible art, she'd had this beautiful like rainbow emu. Um, it was two emu faces side by side and they were in rainbow um, and they were stunning. That was a canvas print. The other thing that we did, Lauren and I, when we were there, is there was a screen printing um, workshop. Not workshop, like a activity mark. Shed. Pavilion? I don't know. Like, tent, tables, art. Um, and it was um, free. So we could do it for free. So we, um, they said you can pick a bag and then pick a pattern and a color and then screen print it. So they taught us how to screen print. And Lauren and I looked at it and we were like, you know what? We should make one for each other. And I was like, this is the best idea ever. So this is the one that Lauren made for me. So it starts off with the hands and this is just in a purple. 
And then I want to make sure you can see. Can is that yeah, that's where it should be. So the eye, there's bits of pink in it, and I especially love how the bits of pink come through here and up here. It just adds dimension and depth, and it's so beautiful. There is also a tiny little smudge of orange on the handle, and she was really embarrassed about it, but I love it because I just think it makes it more natural. So what you have to do is you these are just acrylic paint. Um, and then you've got to heat set it. So I have little instructions on here um, for what to do. And basically you just run an iron over it um, to heat set it. And then you can wash it. And it's totally washable. So I love that. I haven't heat set it yet. But I'm going to try and there's a little splodge here. So I'm going to try and heat set it in a way that goes almost up to the blodge, but not quite. Just so that that can come off. But I want to heat set the little orange splodge. Because I love the orange splodge. So I'm going to heat set that on and keep it on there. <laughs> um, the next things I wanted to talk to you about were books. This is longer than I thought it would be. I thought this would be like a really short one, but I, I forgot how much I knit <laughs> and how much I talk. So I these are two books that I've recently bought and I read them both in about two days each no like a day a day each um and oh my goodness i i just need to recommend them because they are amazing so the first one i'm going to talk about is anything but fine by tobias madden which is this book here this is possibly one of the best books i have read in a very 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 long time and if you are an english teacher if you are a teacher in high school if you like the following topics, you must read this. And if you don't, you are failing um, a life goal because it would be a travesty to make this not be read. Like it is so good. The last probably 10 chapters, I cried, just consistently cried. And it's hard for a book to get that emotional reaction from me. Um, and I, I can't say enough good things about this. So it's about a boy called Luca. And he is going to audition for the Australian Ballet School. Unfortunately, he misses a step down the stairs and he shatters his foot. Not just breaks it, shatters his foot. He loses his scholarship, his performing arts scholarship, um, at a private school where all of his friends go to. And his grades aren't very good. So he basically is kicked out. Not officially, but they're like, you need to pay full school fees. And they can't afford Him and his dad can't afford to pay. So he has to move to um, the public school. This is set in Ballarat in Melbourne. Um, so it's got so much Aussie slang, which is also really fun. Um, and it's definitely written by a dancer. It turns out the author actually is a dancer. Um, so Tobias Madden himself is a dancer. Um, and it's just, it's very clear because there are very um, specific emotions that come through based on the dance. Um, he, so Luca basically everything is gone. It's like a massive coming of age story where he's just like, well, everything I was working for is, is now shattered. Literally my foot is shattered. It's a, um, career ending injury and he's 17, 16. Like, how do you get past that? Um, and he's very much like, you know, everything I've ever wanted is now ripped from me. Um, I don't know who I am without this. I don't know what to do without this. Um, he knows he's gay and he's always been open about it. And so he goes to occupational therapy um, and he meets a boy in the waiting room called Jordan. And Jordan is like the school popular boy who dates lots of girls and is super attracted to Luca. And Jordan kind of starts being like, what the heck? And starts struggling with it. So it's a coming of age story. It's a grief and loss story. It deals with um, Luca's mum who passed when he was two and the difficulty of of managing that um it deals with gay teen romance the diversity cast in this oh mwah, chef's kiss like the cultural respect and the openness and the diversity please read this it you must you must read this 
I actually ended up texting Lauren, the friend who I went to the markets with, um, the whole time through and was like reading her passages and just being like, you need to read this. Um, I was going to send her a video of me crying, but I thought that was a little bit too far. But I basically was just like, if you don't, like you need to finish your assignments and marking this weekend. So you've got two days to read this because if you don't, your life is not worth living anymore. This is the best thing ever. <sighs> so mm, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. Um, it does have swearing in it. It doesn't have any um, sexually explicit. I mean, it mentions, um, it, it kind of insinuates at something, but it doesn't actually talk about anything. Um, and But it does have a lot of swearing. So um, that's the only, only thing I've got to say, but oh my God, it's so good. The second book I started reading straight after this. <clears throat> this one is called This Woven Kingdom. It's by Tahira Murphy. I think that's how you say her name. Um, and one thing I love about this is it has, um, the word in English and then I think that's Arabic, um, or Aramaic. Um, so it's got, yeah, one and then it's got the letter or the word for one in the other language. And I love that. This is very different to this and I struggled at first reading it. This is written very poignantly, um, by someone who's very in touch with what it was like to be a teenager um, and very honestly and openly and straight to the point. It just is. This book moves at a quick pace and it is, um, it's almost a year in the whole book, almost a year. This book is about f a few days, maybe a week, two weeks. Um, and it moves so slowly. It is written like poetry. It's written beautifully. It, it flows but for as much as you're reading, it, it, this one felt like I was being pulled along by the storyline. This one felt like I was being shown a scenery on a train. And there was a bit of a jarring distance between the two. Um, I ended up really getting into this book and I would also recommend it. It is the first book in a series. I don't know how many books in the series, but it definitely is in a series towards the end, it started getting a little bit like, oh, I can see the Cinderella influence. Oh, I can see the, you know, Aladdin influence. Like there was a couple of things like that, which I personally love. Um, one of my other favorite authors, um, Lynette Noni, she also does that. And it just, I love that nod to classic, classic literature, um, without being derivative. I really enjoy that. So by the end of this, it was beautiful. It just took me a while to get into it at the beginning because I was so caught up in this. Um, but this is also probably this is like 12 out of 10 and this is like eight out of 10. So <laughs> very high ratings. Um, yes. So the other thing that I bought other thing I found online, it was an Instagram ad and I was like, you know what? That seems cool. Let's do it. Where are I need like scissors or something. Can I do it? Poke it with the edge of the sunnies. Oh, shoot. Oh, I did not see you come in. Um, I did not <laughs> yeah, come come hang out with Mac. That's fine. Um, Oh, my God. Open. Open up. Why would you wrap it so many times with sticky tape? If I open this, it's got like stuff in it. All right, let's see if I can do this. Ha ha. Fun. How cute is that? All right. So, oh, how do I? That was a dumb idea. Close it again. This is the Aussie Biz Chick uh, box. Are you going to watch me do this? No, sorry. You can if you want. It just, no, you're like sorry. staring at me like. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so this is the Aussie Biz Chick box. Um, it says, enjoy your box. Can't wait to see your unboxing pictures. So I've got to do unboxing pictures. But that's all right. <laughs> um, so this is the theme networking. Basically, it is a subscription box all about um, business and being an entrepreneur. Um, 
I've talked a little bit about how I want to actually grow bottle and wall and I want it to be a bit more serious. Um, and I've also, uh, I'm thinking of doing, like I said, a blog for Oat Journal, um, for my travels. And I would love that to be more serious as well. That's going to be called Eucalyptus Travels. Um, cause I'm obviously so Aussie. I've got to run with the theme. Um, so bottle and wool and eucalyptus travels. So I was thinking I need to be able to do something about growing myself and getting better at this. So I'm going to start taking a few more, um, like reading more books and maybe a few courses and just learning how to be a better entrepreneur because I would love to be. Um, so we've got, um, the theme of networking and then inside is like a brochure of all the different parts that are included in, um, this box. It says total value is 500, oh, $587. Um, dollars, which is so cool. And this was like 80 bucks. So I'm super happy with this box already. Haven't even opened it. Um, June coming up is building wealth. July is getting over imposter syndrome. August website optimization, September SEO and October is going to be Pinterest. So these are all things that I definitely know that I will want to get information on. Um, like I said, this was an Instagram ad that I actually clicked on. I was like, this is cool. One of my best friends also runs her own business. And so I thought, Hey, w once I've read this, would you want to do it? And then we can do like a book club almost. And she was like, yeah, that sounds cool. Really cool. So I'm going to read these first and then I'm going to send them over to her. probably with my notes inside. I'm also going to be taking notes. Actually, that's what I wanted to do. Mm. I'll do it in this one. Um, I wanted to be taking notes as I read to be actively reading because I find sometimes when I read, it can be really passive. And I also tend to read so much young adult that I, I miss key phrases. So if I've got something like this, I can actually write them all down in and then keep it for myself, which I think is a really good idea. I am going to say goodbye now and then film the unboxing. So if the unboxing sucks, it won't be in here. <laughs> um, I might put up a picture. And if it is good, then it'll be in here. Um, hopefully before this bit. <laughs> um, I really hope you have enjoyed. My name is Astrid. You can find me at wattleand.wool uh, on Instagram. If you do enjoy and um, want to share this with your friends, please do. Please like and subscribe. It gets me out there a little bit more. Um, and if you've got any comments or feedback or would like to test knit any of the five different